Welcome back to Mermaid Monster, you guys. If you missed last week, we had a glorious 50-hour cruise from Puerto Rico to Turks and Caicos after a few days of absolute disaster. We arrived by surfing 10-foot waves into the marina inlet, so believe me when I say it is good to be here, but it's quick come and go, so enjoy this one. So it is 3.30 in the morning and we are getting hit with 50 knot winds out of nowhere. I woke up to just, it's a feeling the boat makes, a vibration, and I knew something was wrong. Uh, we're on a dock here in Turks and Caicos, so we're okay. Our friends got hit with this in the Bahamas, but I didn't look because I didn't, I didn't see it coming. <sighs> Everything will be up fine. Uh, we just gotta watch it. We're on floating docks, they're brand new with really nice big cleats. So Brayden's out there throwing on a ton more lines to make sure we're good because we're being blown off the top. So we'll watch it. Thank you. What about Is the tide going up or down? I don't know. Okay. I'll check. What about the bow? Did you add another line yeah, to go across? Right what? what? So last night was bananas. I don't know if it was forecasted or not, but we didn't look at the weather before we went to bed because we're at a dock and no one had talked about anything. I think no one looked at weather because when we went outside on the dock, everyone, well, all the Nordhaven owners were outside on the dock, kind of making sure everything was put away in lines. It kind of blindsided everyone. It was gusting to 60, steady 34 to 35 knots for about three to four hours. Um, we have damage on our swim step. It's repairable, it just needs to be painted. There's a kind of a part of the dock that juts out really close to our swim step and it was enough that it just banged against it a little bit. Uh, other than that, we're good. We need to adjust some more things, but it could have been worse. Looks like everyone else is okay. And it's the time of year when those stinking storms blow in in the middle of the night. Don't look forward to that. Here we are, eating egg bites. All right, so we've recovered somewhat from last night. That was crazy. Can you say hi, Leo? Leo had not a clue. He slept like a little baby. Uh, we're gonna go check out Grace Grace Bay or Grace Beach, which was voted number one beach in the world. I don't know by who, but I just saw that. So we gotta we gotta go check it out. The water is beautiful here. It is clear. Uh, we haven't left really this area much, so it's time to explore. So while the absolute gigantic size of Grace Bay was very impressive, the beach itself was for sure not the prettiest we've ever seen. It was pretty, but however, I think if you were to ask the Ritz-Carlton and all the other luxury resorts in the area, they would surely tell you that of course it is rated the best in the world, if you catch what I'm saying. That seems to be the gist of how it works. We can say from experience that the prettiest beaches we've ever been to are difficult to get to and uninhabited by luxury oh. hotels and resorts. Really? No, no, it's not funny. Is it a rough day today? Yeah. You okay? You need a hug? A hug. You alright? <laughs> Can I have a piece of cardboard? Oh my gosh, red onions are... Ugh. Hey, give mom a hug, Ben. She needs a hug. No. She's sad. She's sad. You just came to steal food? But when you look at me cruising day all right so today we are going to we don't know we're going to where we have like three different defini uh, destinations crooked my iguana or all the way to Georgetown we're not exactly sure the weather is good today it's decent today um, and then that weather window quickly closes so we're not exactly sure how far we want to get depending on the weather if the weather's not so good we'll go closer if the weather's great we'll go farther um, 
but we got to get out this inlet right here and we expect it's gonna be similar to when we came in um, let's see what it's like I'm uh, nervous we took everything off the table strapped everything down probably need to double check all that but that's that's what we're doing so fingers crossed that that inlet looks nice because we're going no matter what <laughs> leaving Turks and Caicos. We didn't get as much film here because we were kind of just recovering from a couple day trip and the, coming into Turks was huge waves. We were surfing like they were 10 feet and coming up so high is above the tender deck if you looked behind the boat. It was pretty crazy. It would kind of pick up the boat and then shove you in. Now we're leaving. It's really nice and calm. It should be a beautiful cruise up to the Bahamas. Here we go. So we're just underway. The swell's not too bad. It's slightly annoying. It's like right on the border of like maybe you want to take Dramamine. Just the angle it is, it's kind of wishy-washy, but it's okay. It's not awful. Overall, it's a beautiful sunny day. Wind is minimal. Water and air temperature are the same at 79 degrees. So you want to jump in and swim. It's a great day to do it. Here we are. One thing that we do about every three hours is do an engine room check. So we go through the engine room and make sure that there's no weird smells, that it feels the right temperature. I can heat gun the different items in there to make sure they all read to the proper temperature. Um, it's important because if something goes wrong, it's easier to fix it before the, before it becomes a big problem. I can maybe stop it, I can maybe cool something down that's getting too hot. Uh, believe it or not, sometime, one of the times the hydraulic reservoir um, started to overheat because the pump was failing. Um, I have two pumps, so I can change it over to the second pump. But in this case, uh, just putting a fan on the reservoir would keep it below the temperature that it would automatically shut off, which was good because then the hydro then the uh, stabilizers continue to run. So come down here and let's go look at it and I'll kind of show you what I do.
Okay, it might be a little loud in there to talk, but if you look closely, which would be hard to kind of see, but there's a Sharpie marks on different components in there. And that is where I would hit the, so I make sure that I hit the same laser target each time. And then I can judge those uh, temperatures. I have the temperatures kind of mapped out on what the right thing is just from doing it so much. I have a clipboard that I write down all the temperatures on and that's a big spreadsheet so that I can track the data um, on there. It's kind of like a Maritron system, but manual. You know what a Maritron system is? This would be like a manual temperature read of everything. Um, and we try to go down here about every three hours. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't on longer trips and depending on what's kind of going on. But that's the goal is every three hours. Because there's two engines, it makes it a little bit easier because I can tell like uh, if the alternator on the port engine is a lot hotter than the alternator on the starboard engine, then that would be an indicator that something was wrong without even looking at the spreadsheet, which is nice to be able to compare both of them. The exception is, is that on one engine uh, versus the other, if the components are on the outside, so they're between the wall and the engine, and then on if the other components are in the same kind of ventilated space or non-ventilated space, there might be a difference in temperature. So if one component gets more airflow on it, on, on a port engine, maybe it gets more airflow than the starboard engine, that component might be slightly different, but we can account for that pretty easily based on where it is. So that's how we make sure that something doesn't happen, um, that we can catch something before it gets too bad. Let me give you an example of what happened. One time I just forgot to put the dipstick in all the way on the generator. And because I went down here, I saw a mess, just an enormous mess everywhere. And I, if I wouldn't have gone down there, um, that generator would have eventually failed or would have had huge problems due to lack of oil. So by coming down here early, I was able to address that problem and clean up a crazy mess that was a mess, just absolutely everywhere, oil. It wasn't that much, but oil just made it so hard to clean up. Um, I was able to catch that before it became more of a mechanical problem. It was just that messy problem, not a mechanical problem. Messy problems are one thing, mechanical problems are not so much fun. Pizza night. It's not hot. Um, not hot sauce. I'll take honey. I don't know if you'll like the honey with the. I put squash on it with the red onion <laughs> and tomatoes. Looks good. And I put honey, red pepper flakes, and Frank's hot sauce on. Not it. on mine. I won't put anything on yours. Anything else? Unless you want honey. But anything honey. else? Yeah. So there's hot sauce on mine. Okay. There's no hot sauce. You're good. You're hot sauce free. I, you know how my heartburn gets, bro. Yeah. Yes, I do. But I'm doing this and then you'll be in charge of cooking them. Doesn't the oven do that? Well, you gotta put them in and stuff, you know, like... This, this smells good. We have a cutting board that looks like a paddle, a pizza paddle. You could just slide it in like they do. Blake, please. I'm busy. Here, I'll get another. He's been sleeping a lot today. Oh, he yeah, has. Maybe he's seasick. We put him in the crib, but like he'll sleep for 30, 45 minutes in the crib. But he'll sleep for like a couple hours or more if you hold him. Right. We just had dinner and now it's wind down time. Tangled hair Hiding behind the curtain
Five o'clock. It's five o'clock, five ten, and I'm gonna go wake up Brooke. It's time to trade shifts here. It was a long night, but I think this is uh, one of the last overnights that we're gonna do. Good morning, Ernie. Good morning. to Georgetown. We just decided to go all the way through. We were going to stop at Auckland or Crooked or whatever it's called, but we decided to keep going because there's a blow coming in tomorrow. So we want to get anchored and safely tucked away for that blow. And we're meeting some friends in Georgetown. It'll be fun. It's crazy to think it's been a year since we were here last, but the ride wasn't bad through the night and here we are. But they feel no shame if only Welcome to the Bahamas. Look at this. You can go a lot of places, but no one has the consistent blue waters for miles and miles and miles like the Bahamas. It's amazing. You can just tell this is the Bahamas. There's a certain color of blue. It's the Bahamas, and it's amazing. It feels good to be here. Look, there's a lot of different countries out there that have a lot of cruising. Um, with the Caribbean and, and everything like that and they all have their little pieces. The one thing that you just can't beat about the Bahamas is it's huge. You don't have to check in and check out when you go from island to island because the whole country is huge. Where most of the Caribbean, to go to each individual island, you have to check in and check out and there's a process and it's time consuming. Um, this is enormous and you can anchor wherever you want. It's all, the entire country is all 10 feet deep. It's not true, but there's a ton. It, everything is like between 10 and 20 feet, which is nerve wracking for drafts sometimes, but it's great because it makes us um, just pristine water. So I hope we get a day without any wind because then it just turns into like, I've seen these photos where it looks like your boat is floating on air because there's not a ripple in the water. And I, I always want to get one of those photos and I know that we can't keep on coming back to the Bahamas, so I gotta get one of these photos soon because I never know when my last time the Bahamas is gonna be. This is great though.
I want to show something out here. Look, so this is a muddy mess, but you put the bridle down right here. See the bridle goes from here to here. But the one thing that's interesting, well, that I've learned is that you stick a ton of chain. The bridle's only like 10 feet, but I probably put like 50 feet of chain out, maybe 40 feet, maybe 30 feet. But um, th what that does is when the, it really puts a lot of weight on the bottom of the bridle, there's a bunch of chain hanging at the bottom of the bridle and that makes sure the bridle stays low. Even when it gets windy or some swells, it puts that weight down there to make the bridle um, stay as low as possible all the time. So let me, I think in this water here, you can kind of see what it looks like. It's just so weird just being here back in Georgetown anchored from last year is about the same time Brandon and I were looking maybe two weeks off but we have a baby now I was pregnant when we were here last year we've covered the entire Caribbean chain all the way back hit a bunch of countries how many countries I think this is the ninth country Leo's been just to. Leo's been in so we've covered so much ground and it's cool I it took a long time to get him here into our life and to be here as a family, like a complete family, it feels really good. Well, I think it's a complete family. What do you think, Brayden? Yeah. Is it complete? No. <laughs> Did he try? Burn it down and let everything aside. Sweet